Today we'll be starting our final unit on circles. Now, these are the words that we're going to be looking at in this video. It's going to be a lot of vocabulary, so I'm just going to talk through it and kind of highlight pictures. If you need to pause to take notes, please do that with each part. So first off, we have a circle. Of course, the definition of a circle is a set of all points on a plane at a set distance from a given point in the plane. So if I start here as my center, every point that's equidistant would make this circle. Next, of course, we have our radius, which is a segment from the center of a circle to a point on the circle. All radii on the circle are going to be congruent no matter where you draw them. So if this was 7, this would be 7, 7, and 7. Next, we have the distance around the circle, which we know to be the circumference if you travel around it, which we find by doing 2 pi r. All right, here's where it gets kind of new. We have an arc. An arc is two points on a circle and the continuous unbroken part of the circle between the two points. So from B, traveling along the circle to C would be arc BC. Notice the new notation with the arc sign here for B to C. Notice it doesn't travel in a straight line, but around the actual circle. Okay. Next we have what we call a semicircle. A semicircle is an arc of a circle whose endpoints are the endpoints of a diameter. So a semicircle is basically half of a circle. When we talk about a semicircle, we use three letters to name it. So from B to D to C gives me a semicircle or half of a circle. A minor arc is an arc whose length is less than half of the circle. We name it with only two points. So arc B to C would be a minor arc because it's less than half the circle being named with only two points. Like a piece of a pie or a piece of a pizza would be an example of a minor arc because it's going to be less than half. Here we have a major arc. This is an arc of a circle whose length is more than half. And we use three points to name it. So arc B to C, then to D would be a major arc. So as a review here, a semicircle is half of a circle. A minor arc is less than half of a circle. And a major arc is more than half of a circle. Three points for a major arc. Because if I just said BD, I don't know if I'm going this way or this way. Because BD this way would be a minor arc. Whereas BCD is a major arc. All right, a chord is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. So it goes from one point in the circle to the other through it. So this is different from an arc because it's an actual line now. The most famous chord that you know about is a diameter. A diameter is a chord that contains the center of the circle. It's going to be the longest chord of a circle. So, of course, when you order a pizza, you order by its diameter. If it's on the menu for like 10 inches, 12 inches, or whatever it may be. All right, a secant looks kind of like a chord from the inside, but it continues through both parts. So a secant is a line that intersects a circle in two points. It contains a chord, and a secant is an, a line, not just a segment. Tangent line is very important. A tangent line is a line that intersects a circle at a single point, so it just touches that one point. It is always perpendicular to the radius. That's critical that you remember that the tangent line is perpendicular to the radius of the circle. The point of tangency is the point where the tangent line intersects the circle. So point C is your point of tangent C. Two more. And this one's a big one. Central angle. A central angle is an angle whose vertex is the center of the circle and whose sides contain radii, which is plural for radius, of the circle. So a central angle starts from the center and has two radii. It must be in the exact center for example, if I draw this circle, and I draw this chord, and this chord, this is not a central angle, because it's not in the center of the circle. And finally, we have inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex lies on the circle. So it's got to be on the circle, not in the middle, not somewhere floating in the circle, but on the side. So here would be an example where we have both an inscribed angle and a central angle. This would be a central angle right here, and this would be an inscribed angle. Sorry, it should have been more like that. An inscribed angle would be right here. 
All right, so the measure of a circle, if we go all the way around the circle, we know that it's 360 degrees. The measure of a semicircle, so half, would be half of 360, so 180 degrees. Now, this is a big theorem for you. The measure of a central angle is equal to the measure of its intercepted arc. And what do I mean by that? If you draw the central angle, the arc that's between the two radii is going to be congruent to the central angle. That's the intercepted arc. So if I have this, it's really quite a bad circle, sorry. 120 degrees for the central angle, the arc will also be 120 degrees. All right, so let's try three problems out. Here we have the measurement angle BOC equals 32 degrees. Arc CD, the measure of that is 58 degrees. So if this is 32, it's a central angle, so the intercepted arc will also be 32 degrees. Now if the intercepted arc is 58 degrees, the central angle will also be 58 degrees. Now notice here you have a semicircle, because this is a diameter of the circle, which means that this is a straight line, so it has to have to 180. So 180 minus 32 gives you 148 degrees, and that'll be true for the intercepted arc. Here's also a straight line, so 122 and 122. So then we fill in the blanks. The measure of arc BC is 32 degrees. The measure of angle DOA is 122 degrees. Arc BD, 90 degrees, because we have to add them up. And arc ABC is 148 plus, one, plus 32, which is 180 degrees. All right, I want you to pause the video now and try to fill these in. I'll give you a word of caution. Do not assume that that's a diameter on there. Now, please pause the video. Try it. All right, let's see how you did. So if this is 70, this is 70. If this is 115, this is 115. If this is 85, this is 85. 25 here. Now, a full circle has to add up to 360. So this is 185 plus 85 is, uh, let's see here, 270. 295, so 65 degrees goes right here. So arc BC is 65 degrees. Arc AC is we add them, so 135. Arc BE is 65 plus 25 plus 85, 175. Arc ADC, so oh, we got to go this way to D first and then to C. So let's see, it's going to be 225, because we have to add all of these up. Now, finding angle BOD is going to be 90 degrees. All right, let's look at this last one together because it models what your homework looks like. We know this is our given information. Angle EIB is 90 degrees, which, of course, makes that 90. EI is 3. BF is 5. HG is also 5. And angle ABH is congruent to angle FBG. Now, BF is a radius, so everywhere I see a radius, I can label it 5, because all radii of a circle are congruent. Now, you see a triangle right here, and all the sides are the same, which makes it equilateral. If it's equilateral, it's also equiangular. So that means all the angles are 60, 60, and 60. Which, you see a diameter here, makes a straight line of 180. So you subtract 60, you get 120, divide that in 2, 60, and 60, which makes arc AH 60 degrees, arc HG 60 degrees, and arc GF 60 degrees. Now here you see a right triangle, 3, 5, so Pythagorean theorem tells me that this is 4, and that's this is 3. Looking at it further, we know that the distance from B to the top of the circle is 5, and if this is 4, that leaves 1. So this problem is good to look at as you practice that big problem on your homework. Be sure to practice, and thanks for watching.